Tiburcio Vazquez was born on April 11, 1835 in what is now present-day Monterey, California, but at the time was part of Mexico. His parents, Jose Herman Gildo Vazquez and Maria Guadalupe Cantua, followed Spanish tradition and celebrated his birth on the feast day of St. Tiburcio, August 11th. In 1776, Tiburcio's great-grandfather arrived in Alta, California with Juan Batista's Dianza's expedition, bringing 300 people to colonize the area in hopes of a new opportunity in life. Tiburcio was of middle-class background and lived on land granted to his father for military service. Growing up, he learned the ropes of ranching and shooting a firearm, while also the pleasantries of town dances. He attended public school and became fluent in English and Spanish. His yearning for adventure and possibly opulence preceded his interest in school. At 17, he befriended Anastasio Garcia, a ruthless bandit that may have tried to pin a fight that turned deadly on the teen. Tiburcio pleaded his innocence, but fled. By 1856, Tiburcio was rustling horses and caught near Newhall, landing him five years in San Quentin prison. It would not last as he joined in several prison breaks that left 20 convicts dead, and within a year he was back robbing businesses, cattle, and stagecoaches in Sonoma County. His signature left his victims tied behind their backs and face down in the dirt, although a botched robbery in Petaluma would end his unrest and deliver him three more years in confinement. He recruited convicts, including Juan Soto and Procipio Bustamante, to ride with him during this time. At 35, he led the gang on countless raids, chilling those in his path and growing his associations. One of those who looked to slow him down was lawman Robert Little, who shot it out with Tiburcio in Santa Cruz on September 10th, 1871. Tiburcio's gang was hiding in the mountains after a stagecoach heist and hearing of a friend's lockup nearby, Narciso Rodriguez. Tiburcio decided with Francisco Barcenas and Garcia Rodriguez to blast him out. First, the three stopped at a brothel, but the madame tried to shun them away. They shot out all the windows as they left, and Bob Little rushed to the scene hearing the gunshots. As shots flew in a frenzy, the lawmen met the outlaws between Pacific Avenue, Front Street, and Water Street. A bullet knocked down Little, but he shot Tiburcio in the chest. The three fled with more broken windows and mayhem, and Little tending to his wounds in the local saloon. Tiburcio was badly injured on his horse. It may have killed Tiburcio not for his sister's careful nursing for months that put him back in the saddle. It was now 1873, and the gang had just looted 2,200, equivalent to 50,000 today, in Tres Peños, the present town of Pacines, in San Benito County. This feat gained them national attention as three guards were killed, and a $1,000 bounty was placed on his head by Governor Newton Booth. Sheriff John H. Adams chased the gang but lost them as they traveled south. Tiburcio and his men found themselves at first in Antelope Valley in Elizabeth Lake, where they rested at the home of his brother Francisco. They carried on to Little Rock Creek and camped for a time. Not surprisingly, the Mexican-American families were interested in his plight, however he waved it. His upbringing led him to poetry, fanciful dancing, and a cowboy guitar playing 50 years before Gene Autry. Women swooned, and he took to those caring little if they were married. In November, Tiburcio's gang returned to San Joaquin Valley, holding up a store in Millerton, Fresno County, on Christmas break in Kingston. Several posses formed, and the legislator assigned Alameda County Sheriff Harry Morse the task. The gang was riding towards Bakersfield when Cladovio Chavez found what is now known as Robert's Roost. The jagged rocks had an elevation of 4,000 feet, ample hiding places, and a perfect vantage point to watch the rich stagecoaches moving south towards L.A. The gang could see for 20 miles in each direction. 
At Coyote Holes, near the present intersection of Highway 178 and 14, they took advantage of a stagecoach from the Ciro Gordo Mines near Owens Lake. Tiburcio shot a man in the fray, and the gang left for Elizabeth Lake in Soledad Canyon. There, they robbed another stage and stole a wagon with horses in present-day Acton. According to legend, Tiburcio was often polite but stern in his theft. Once a man refused to give up his gold watch, claiming it was a gift from his recently departed wife. Tiburcio let it go and offered his condolences. Another story speaks of a rich man who did not carry enough cash, and Tiburcio warned him to bring more next time or he would be a dead rich man. They began hiding out in what is now called Vasquez Rocks, a dramatic-looking terrain with jagged rocks, shallow caves, and recesses that troubled any posse. At 150 feet, the tallest rock was believed to be their lookout. They were untouched for several months. On April 15, 1874, Tiburcio kidnapped Alexandro Rapido, an Italian sheepman who owned much of Monterey Park. Alexandro's son was sent to the Temple and Workman Bank in downtown L.A., where City Hall now stands, to raise a ransom. However, his nervous behavior aroused the bank president, who sent Sheriff William R. Rowland in his place. Rowland's posse chased the gang through what is now Pasadena and further into the San Gabriel Mountains across steep slopes and canyons. Tiburcio befriended Greek George Carolambo and hid in his adobe cabin in the northwest corner of Rancho La Brea. Greek George had used the vacant cabin for his failed camel business. On a map, it is considered by some around current Melrose Place. It had a pool and several sycamore trees. Carolambo's extended family came in contact with Tiburcio, with the elders knowing to stay away, but his niece of 18 years fell for his romantic eye. Time passed and her pregnancy revealed her parents of the tryst. Outrage spread and Cornelia Lopez, the wife of Greek George, called for justice and her husband's action against Tiburcio. Agreeing, he sent the sheriff, whose posse descended on the cabin, shattering it in a hail of bullets, giving up Tiburcio. Tiburcio spent nine days in the Los Angeles County Jail with numerous requests for interviews, but only took three. His main points were returning California to Mexican rule and insisting on his innocence of murder. By late May, he was taken by steamship to San Francisco and stood trial in San Jose. His attention and his chosen words only increased his popularity amongst Mexican-Americans. Still, at trial in January of 1875, he admitted to participating in the deadly Tres Pinos robbery in San Benito County. Whether his gun was fired or not, any involved would be convicted of murder and sentenced to hang. The trial ended in four days with only hours to deliberate. In San Jose, visitors, many women, begged for autographs and asked him to pose for photographs, which he sold to pay his legal fees. He appealed to Governor Romaldo Pachicho, but was denied, and on March 19, 1875, he lost his final battle. Tiburcio was buried in Santa Clara Mission Cemetery in Santa Clara, California. His roots and vigor have led some scholars to believe he inspired Zorro. However, like another outlaw, Joaquin Morita, the truth is often wilder than fiction and perhaps meets somewhere between both. This has been Biographies of the West. My name is Lauren Morgan Richards. Thanks for watching. <laughs>